Good morning and thank you all for joining us today. This session will run over next three hours, including Q&A. The session is being recorded and will be uploaded to our Reactor YouTube channel. In I will share the link of our YouTube channel in the chat section soon. Before we begin, please take a moment to read our code of conduct. We are all here to learn together, so please be respectful of other people's views. Understanding of differences, being kind and considerate in the way you engage. The chat will be open throughout and we do encourage you all to participate. Please keep your mics muted during the session. Now, I would like to welcome Shivam, speaker for today's session. Shivam is an author, cloud architect, speaker and co-founder at TechScalable. Being passionate about ever-evolving technology, he works on Azure, GCP, machine learning and blockchain. He is also a Microsoft certified trainer. As of now, over to Shivam to begin the session. Thank you, Parth. I'll share my screen. Yeah. Okay, welcome everyone. Hopefully all of you are doing well and you are safe at home as well. So let's get started. And I'll just walk you through the agenda for the day and we will understand the problem statements and so on and so forth and then we will start with the with with the deep dive as such so today we are discussing cicd with gitops using azure arc enabled kubernetes clusters my voice is slightly off today so uh, it will get warmed up uh, pretty soon now so you will notice that we have a couple of things uh, to understand over here like what is gitops that's one thing Secondly, what is uh, Azure Arc? And then what is Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes cluster? Uh, what is the meaning of that? And then what is basically, uh, how do we do it? Like CICD with GitOps for Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes cluster. That's the, the third part. So we will go through uh, these individual components uh, over there. Right, but before I do that, I just want to quickly uh, take you to the to the uh, learning module. So whatever we will discuss today, like uh, all the details over here will be available. I think I will share the, the learning module separately then. I'll show you from where we are doing it. And the so I'll take you to MS Learn over here. So whatever we discuss today, for example, we will discuss about how to create the Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes cluster, how to connect your application and, and GitOps repo to Azure repos as such, the how to create the CI/CD pipeline, the ACR part of it, what is a variable group, we, that will take some time in creating, we'll, we'll create few groups. Then uh, we will do the deployment to dev and stage environments, and then we will test the application as well. So whatever we are discussing is also available on uh, Microsoft's repository. So if I take you, I'll give you all the links on the way as well. Just want to show you uh, how do we find it. So basically if I go to the my MS Learn and if I just shortest the, the links over there and if I just look for the learning path and uh, the, let me just quickly see which one is the correct one over here. Okay, this one. And if I click on it, then you will see that we have all the things which we are going to discuss will be will also be there in a very structured manner. So this link is going in the chat, and you can also bookmark it, and uh, you can also go through it, and it will just make the uh, you can say because we'll be discussing a lot of different things, so you may have to revisit all those concepts. So you can also go through these links in in some time as well. OK, so uh, if I just walk you through this uh, module here, you will notice that we have introduction to Azure Arc. And we will also understand from there only what is Azure Arc and uh, what are what is this Azure Arc enabled servers? What is uh, what is Azure Arc enabled server at scale? How do you secure the habit, the uh, the hybrid uh, and multi cloud machines? And there are a couple of more modules over here regarding monitoring introduction to Azure Arc enabled uh, Kubernetes. 
and introduction to Azure Arc Enable uh, data services. So as part of part of the Kubernetes one, <coughs> we have the Azure Arc Enable Kubernetes with the GitOps, right? So all the theory is there. It's very well structured. Uh, you can go through it and you will be able to uh, understand all these things uh, as such. Now, okay, so now I'll just uh, bring you back to my, and today we have a longer session. Uh, generally, my sessions are uh, of one hour, but today we have the longer one. So the session will mostly last for two and a half hours, not exactly three hours. So we'll go through all these diagrams which I have kept uh, ready for you and some of the big ones. So we don't have to waste time in uh, making all of them, but the smaller ones will be creating on the way and we'll be seeing the demos and so on and so forth. So before I start with all of that, I just want to open my notepad and just want to list on a couple of things which we'll be going through. So we were just thinking it through that. What are the various things we have to understand? So one of the thing which we have to understand is that what is GitOps, right? What is the meaning of it? Why do we have it? Uh, and then how do we do it also? Do it and also. then we also have uh, yeah. the option. Uh, uh, right, please mute. OK, so uh, what is uh, GitOps? That's one thing which we will be going through. The, the second thing is uh, what is Azure Arc? Azure Arc and how do we how do we work with it is going to be very straightforward, but what is Azure Arc and uh, we'll take it first. We'll take this part first and then we'll see the GitOps maybe later on after that. So once we understand these two things, uh, then as part of GitOps, we have to understand Flux. So we'll see what is this Flux over there. And this Flux is basically the, the component which make it possible. So the Flux, uh, we'll go through the architecture and that's what, what is you can see is over here. Flux namespace and so on and so forth. So we'll go through that. And uh, and we'll also see one more thing like what is uh, DevOps DevOps versus uh, uh, GitOps and uh, why is it something which uh, it's not very so you can say where is Git GitOps focusing and what is the focus of DevOps and so on and so forth. We'll go through all of those things and anything else which we had in the on the landing page where we were creating the Arc enable cluster and so on and so forth. We'll do that right. So let's get started. And we'll start from here, Azure Arc, uh, then take the other ones. We'll take the other ones after that. OK, so now before I walk you through all of this, I just want to use my whiteboard before uh, I take you there. Just want to explain things simply first, and then uh, we'll, we'll see a uh, little more details, right? So uh, the very first thing, what is Azure Arc? OK. So now Azure Arc is about management of the of hybrid environments and uh, which and this hybrid environment will be deployed outside Azure and it's it's uh, you can say even if you have environment in uh, uh, let's say Azure AWS GCP and uh, if even if you have environment uh, on premises or in any other on premises or cloud that's that's the locations as such so you will be able to manage all this environment by using uh, Azure Arc, right? So what happens is that uh, basically let's say you have physical servers and what can you manage as part of Azure Arc? So in today's world, you must have seen that the companies they go for hybrid uh, structure and they go for multi cloud as well. Some clouds are better are having some services which are better. We can put it the way it is and or they are more aligned with the problem statement of the customer in that point in time. So for that they wanted to use some other clouds as well. So and people also don't want to get stuck in with one vendor. So maybe because of these reasons, uh, you will see that a lot of multi cloud deployments are very practical as such. We use the best of all the worlds, right? So even if you let's say you have some machines on premises uh, or you have. Uh, you have physical servers, Windows servers or Linux servers on premises, or even if you have virtual environments and virtual env environments from uh, VMware, you have VMware. Uh, uh, vSphere and basically this is a server host server over here and inside this host you have lost a lot of guest machines. So let's say and these guest mas machines are deployed on premises and you would like to centralize the because your uh, structure because your architecture is distributed in all, so many different uh, you can say locations. So you would like to have a type of layer by which you can do the management of all of this 
centrally. That central service which can do that is Azure Arc. So this is what we are representing as VMware. Right, VMware uh, vSphere over here. Now, so virtualized machines are there. So these are the machines over here, VM one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth. Uh, or apart from this, even if I have Kubernetes cluster, so this is not uh, Azure Kubernetes cluster, which we are trying to represent over here. This, this is any Kubernetes cluster anywhere uh, on premises or uh, in other clouds, GCP and uh, AWS. So this is that cluster, which is somewhere in the world. So if you want to centrally manage this cluster, right, that can also be done with the Azure Arc uh, as such. So the location of this cluster, we are, we'll just put it some, let's say in AWS. Uh, let me just do one thing. Let me just write a little clearly. I'll take my time. We have time today, uh, so I'll just take my little more time over here. AWS and this is GCP maybe, or maybe this is Azure also, right? Maybe uh, it's your client's uh, subscription which you want to manage uh, uh, and the cluster is over there. Or if even if you have servers which are. You can say which are. Uh, this is SQL servers and this is SQL server. Is, is right, so it's not only Kubernetes which can be managed. Physical machines can be managed. You can have SQL machines also. So this is the server. And that's the DB. And it's somewhere in the world, right? It's uh, on prem or in the cloud, so that can also be managed. Now, if you are aware of uh, Azure Stack, uh, let me see if I can pull one picture from uh, from Internet. So check this out. So this is Azure Stack HD HCI from uh, Different vendors names are there. Uh, Dell, Data on Lenovo. And other vendors are also there. You can simply look up for them in the over the Internet. So this is called as just give me one second. Let me arrange my screen. Over here. OK, so check this out. So this is uh, Azure Stack. So Azure Stack is is the private cloud, right? Azure is a private cloud, or you can when you have the hybrid cloud and your uh, servers are on premises and you want to deploy stuff over there. So we have this offering called as Azure Stack. So this this diagram is of Azure Stack HCI, and the the hardware is available from various vendors. You can look up for them in the the documentation. So if you even if you have that, and your deployment is done on top of Azure Stack HCI, or any of the previous things which we are talking about. So that central service which can manage uh, all of this is called as Azure Arc, right? So we'll just put one line like that. So this is the management plane. You will sit in one location. You will connect everybody. Uh, and once you have connected everybody, you will sit in one location and then you can manage all of them, right? So this is the meaning of Azure Arc and your clusters can be. Uh, and today we are just working with the Kubernetes cluster. The others uh, we are not uh, today. We are not, not not a day for the others over there but uh, things can be done like this, right? So I'll just take you to the to Microsoft's documentation and we'll read a couple of more definitions about this uh, over there. Uh, and uh, so if I take you to that, you will notice that this is what we have here. So uh, this is the diagram uh, of Azure Arc and uh, uh, it's the same thing, so we'll just go through a couple of more things over here. If we see anything uh, Delta, any Delta to be covered. So Windows, Linux machines, physical servers, Kubernetes clusters, data services, Postgres uh, 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 instances, Azure SQL managed instances also, and SQL servers uh, which are outside Azure, and the virtual machines as part of VM, VMware's vSphere, and that CI, everything is there. So what, what do we do with it? We can. We can implement consistent inventory management governance security for the servers across all the environments and we can configure. We can do the governance of the Kubernetes at scale from one location and we can implement the GitOps, GitOps uh, uh, practices over there. We'll see what what's the meaning of that and other things zero zero touch compliance and so on and so forth. Right, so all of this is basically this is the meaning of uh, Azure Arc where we will be able to do the hybrid management of the services. From the cloud. OK, now so this is one part of what we were thinking of uh, discussing about that. What is this arc right now? 
So what we will be doing is we uh, will be having one Kubernetes cluster and that Kubernetes, Kubernetes cluster will be managed by Azure Arc over there. So the cluster which is managed by Azure Arc will be will become the connected cluster which we'll be deploying and we will be using it in maybe 30 minutes or something. We'll go into into that part. So before we go there, what is this? What is GitOps? Right? Let's go into GitOps and let's understand the meaning of GitOps and. Uh, then we'll, we'll go, go further over there. So I'll just uh, explain what is GitOps and I have a couple of official uh, links also open with me over here, so I uh, don't want to take any credit. Uh, so just let me just show you the official links and we'll we'll understand it in the whiteboard as well. That what is the meaning of it and how do we practically uh, work with it? But you will notice that uh, the official page will be this one. Uh, <clears throat> not really the official page, but they have the link to the official page uh, over there. OK, so what is GitOps? So GitOps is a way of implementing continuous deployment of cloud native application. It focuses on the developer centric experience when operating. Uh, when operating infrastructure by using tools developers are already familiar with using uh, like including Git and CD the continuous deployment. So now. OK, great, right? So let's understand in the whiteboard as well. What's the meaning of GitOps and what do we do with it now? And there are a couple of uh, you can say rule of thumbs also in in uh, when we when we talk about GitOps like it will always happen like something will always will be there. So. If I just create one. Uh, if I just explain that again. The so we have to actually uh, understand a difference between the DevOps and, and GitOps to be able to totally get it. So I'll just take your little bit of your time to just explain what is uh, DevOps and DevOps practices so we can compare them with GitOps and we can understand that in the DevOps pipeline or in the entire ecosystem or in the entire uh, logic where does the GitOps fit right? So as part of the DevOps we have the so this is a pretty straightforward thing, right? Most of you must be aware, already aware of it. I'll just reiterate the couple of things uh, as part of DevOps. So now we DevOps is all about providing incremental small incremental value to the to the customer. Now to do that we create the CI and the CD pipelines. So this is the continuous uh, integration pipeline over here. Now we there are a lot of so we have already done many sessions on uh, you can say DevOps practices with DevOps with GitHub Action, DevOps with uh, Azure DevOps services and so and so forth. So you can go and watch these sessions which uh, we have already done. So where we everything is covered in more depth, but here we are just quickly summarizing it so we can compare it. So imagine this is your Git repo and uh, today we'll be using GitHub. So I'll just say GitHub over there. And. Uh, like this, so these are developers and these developers are are and in, in your Git repo you have all the different type of branches. You have the main and you also have the the feature branches are there. Developer branches there, release branches are there, any hot fixes there and so and so forth, right? So now find the at the at uh, what 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 is happening is so we have this continuous uh, integration uh, pipeline and all the this is where your let me just put it there over there integration pipeline the ci1 and the so what, what are you doing over here you are taking care of the the build is happening in in this ci pipeline you are scanning for the, any vulnerabilities in the uh, in the packages you are, you are scanning for any vulnerabilities in the uh, any type of uh, code vulnerability which you have you are scanning for all of that and and the uh, locations so for example when you do any type of test you have to run it somewhere so we have agents where we where we execute the the various steps of the CI pipeline. So for example, if you are using uh, GitHub actions, then we the the agent is called as runner. And if you are using uh, Azure DevOps, then we just call it as agent only. So dev.azure.com Azure DevOps uh, services, then it's just agent and these agents can be cloud hosted, can be can be self hosted and so on and so forth uh, like that. Now the output of this uh, CI pipeline, so this is the artifact over here. Now this artifact is the one which uh, can be uh, an image. So today the artifact which we have will be an image. Uh, we are working with uh, one uh, 
very simple application called as vo uh, voting application, which is part of Microsoft's uh, uh, demonstrations. It's uh, basically having a front end and a, and a back end that is cache back end. So uh, this can be that. So the image, so artifact, the output of this CI pipeline is your image, and this image is having the application and the all the dependencies over there, or uh, or it may be release as well, and this release is uh, stored in your repository itself. So now the location where we are storing this image uh, today will be ACR, Azure Container Registry. So this box is ACR. And ACR is the repository for Docker images. Repo for images over there. In, in Azure, if you want to use uh, Docker Hub as such, you can use anything uh, which you would like to use, but uh, we'll be using the ACR, which is already part of Azure, and it will be securely inside the network. So it's way provides way more security. Now, you can ask your questions in the chat window. Just keep put your questions in the chat. So uh, I'll take the questions on the way. I have the uh, second the the chat on the secondary screen open with me, and uh, in the end of the session also we'll uh, we'll have questions. I think today the session will last for two and a half hours, so we'll have enough time for the questions. Now, uh, okay. So notice this. So we basically have so okay. Now the uh, this is where the CD part comes into picture. So this is my CD pipeline over here, and the CD pipeline is the one where we are going to differentiate between the continuous delivery and the continuous deployment. So if this is representing your. Let's say CD pipeline, then here we have. Two different uh, terms to understand. First is the continuous deployment, so continuous deployment is this line which is going till till production. So this is the. Continuous uh, deployment. And uh, over there, like this. And if and and wh why are you so confident that you can do put that in production is because you have already done the continuous delivery and the confidence is already there that things will not break down and it will still be running if you deploy this in production. So this is the continuous delivery. And now over here, delivery. So this is from where we will try to understand what is what is GitOps doing for us. Uh, if I just scroll a little bit down over here and just put some uh, maybe a few terms over here, there's a testing environment. Then this is the uh, the UAT one, and let's say that's the production one. Now the uh, and here we have infrastructure as code. So infrastructure as code is basically defining uh, the infrastructure as code, as the name suggests, infrastructure as code. So now this is from where what we will. This is where we will try to. Uh, put GitOps. So let's say GitOps over here. So as part of GitOps, the everything has to go through Git. That's that's the bottom line, right? That's that's will will happen. So everything, everything should go through every change. Uh, let's say everything or every change. Uh, let me say every change should go through. Uh, every change should go through Git. Uh, has to go through Git. OK, so. What is the meaning of that and 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 so on and so forth? So let's understand. Let's take some few examples here. Let's say you ha you're working with Kubernetes. So today's topic is Kubernetes, so we'll be we'll be uh, talking about Kubernetes only and but you can implement this for any other uh, logic or any other. Uh, Deployment location as well, but we are just thinking from the point of view of Kubernetes. So uh, now let's say this is the Kubernetes cluster over here. And uh, right. So and that's the YAML file. So this is the YAML file. And with the YAML file, we are doing a deployment in, in Kubernetes. Now, uh, for those who are new to Kubernetes, I'll just spend a couple of uh, minutes into that. I'll just quickly uh, uh, you can see look up for one image on Internet and I found this one. So let's just have a look at this. So uh, this is how this is your typical uh, Kubernetes architecture and we have API server controller scheduler and HCD three com four components are there in the master. 
and uh, this is the, the database which is built on top of Bolt and this is the key value pair, the main database at CD and the controllers are the control loops. There are a lot of different type of controllers and today also we are on trying to understand the custom controllers, the operators which are there. Uh, how do they? How will they behave? And scheduler is, is responsible for uh, for running. You can say assigning these pods to the nodes. You see this the red pod is running on this green node and this green one is running on this one over there. So that that assignment like where will you go with the help of some fil filtering and with the help of uh, you can say predicates the, the hard filters which are there has been done by the, the scheduler. It has just told which pod to go there. It has not done not not schedule it. It has just uh, put that entry in the HCD. So this is your typical uh, Kubernetes architecture and we have done sessions on this before, so please go and have a look at those sessions as well. So if I bring you back to the diagram, so what will happen is that the, the Kubernetes cluster is there and AKS is just Azure Kubernetes services uh, or let me just put uh, Kubernetes over there. So this is the Kubernetes cluster. Now all the changes which are going to happen, you have to commit the change first into, into your Git repository and then that commit will either be pulled or will be pushed to the to the cluster as such. Both the options are available, but we generally use the pull mechanism. So you will look that uh, this is the this is what I'm I'm trying to represent that the the change first goes to Git repository and then it will be pulled by the, the by the operator over there and will be installed. Now this is not very uh, it's pretty intuitive right now, right? Let me just explain one more scenario. So in Kubernetes we have a concept called as auto scaler. So the auto scalers, they uh, and it's a very typical thing like uh, everything should auto scale, right? You should be able to scale out and scale in based on the requirements. Now, uh, so the when the load increases, the auto scaler basically based on your configuration will create more instances and when the load decreases, will remove those extra instances uh, like that. So but uh, an auto scaler normally works uh, directly with Kubernetes. Like if this is the auto scaler, it will simply you can say we'll start deploying when the load increases will will increase the number of instances, number of pods which you have over there and the load balancing will be taken will be done accordingly. But uh, in GitOps, uh, the, the GitOps pattern basically forces that everything has to go through Git, right? Everything has to go through Git. So auto scaler will uh, commit the changes in the Git first and then that will be automatically or or the auto scaling oh, sorry the uh, automation will be there which basically is the the pull or the push pull uh, or the push mechanism to deploy that in in kubernetes so the auto scaler will first commit it inside the let's say this the, the yaml file in your git repository and then this this the change which is happening in the kubernetes cluster so maybe there were earlier three instances running of the front end now we uh, it uh, it has made it 10 instances so now you have the 10 instances running in your cluster over there so these are 10 instances right now so you must have understood that even the auto so what we do is everything we we write it we commit it in the in the in the git repository first and then that is pulled or pushed uh, basically uh, in the uh, in your destination locations so the GitOps is focusing on infrastructure as as code, and GitOps basically is uh, specifying or is is having these practices. And I'll just take you through the GitOps practices. I'll take you to the same page again, and now we will just read it one more time. So, and I'll zoom in over here so we all can follow this over there. So, GitOps is is a way of implementing continuous deployment for cloud native applications. And it focuses on the developer centric experience when uh, when operating the infrastructure uh, and it, it uses the, the tools of uh, it uses Git and continuous deployment tools as such. Now, what are the benefits and what are the patterns of GitOps? So. If I just take you to that, everything happens in the version control system you use for developing the application anyways and the uh, and the uh, and one of the good thing which happens is that in case the environment goes down, the entire history of the changes which you have done is there in in your uh, source uh, configuration, and this makes the recovery 
you can say easier or restoration is easier or you can say more straightforward. Uh, credential management can also be done easily. So basically you, do, you don't have to give developers direct access to the to the production environments and all the the GitOps allows the management of the deployment completely inside from the uh, completely from inside your environment. So the we will commit into the Git and then the deployment will happen in the in the various environments which are there. The dev environment, the stage environment and the uh, any any uh, prod environment. All the deployment will happen from the repository, so there is no direct access to the environment, so it makes the credential management. It makes it more secure and it makes it easy to work with. Once the pipeline has been properly created, then it becomes easy to work with. Now the self documented uh, deployments are there, which uh, basically uh, means that every change uh, to the environment must happen through the repository. So you can always check out the master branch and get a complete description of what is deployed and where the complete history of the change were made to the system. So that's that's one thing. Uh, and the knowledge is also shared among the the team and so on and so forth. So I will share this link in the chat if I have, I have not already done it for you. So go through these type of links and it's in the chat. So what is GitOps? GitOps is all about uh, that everything should happen through the the Git and all the uh, and there are a couple of more things which I would like to show you. Uh, I'll take it back to that same page and I will just show you these mechanisms here. So this is one uh, high level architecture of the push based uh, deployment which is happening over here. So you can see the build pipeline and the some update was pushed in the environment repository and that has triggered the deployment pipeline and deploys the environment over there. Similarly, the pull based mechanism is uh, over here. So where we have this operator which is pulling the request on uh, some trigger or some schedule as such and then it is it observes the uh, image registry or the environment repository and uh, whatever deltas are there whatever uh, whatever uh, whatever the base what is a, whatever is a drift from the baseline is basically deployed to the environment that deployment has been done so this is what we are doing uh, as such pull based mechanisms and this is what we are configuring uh, uh, today over here and and there are a couple of more things over here. You can see how multiple environments can also be taken care of that. If you have multiple environments, then how do you do it? Staging environment and production environment and, and so on and so forth. But uh, right, but we are focusing over here. Now I will just also just want to relate a little more with uh, what we are doing today. So GitOps in Azure, right? So we understand that GitOps is about uh, the. So uh, if I just take you from here. So with GitOps, we declare the desired state of the Kubernetes cluster in files in Git repositories, and then we have will have operators which are monitoring or we'll have one service which is called, basically we have the tool called as Flux. Flux is a tool which will be monitoring or which will be syncing with the with the source configuration, and if there is any change, it will uh, basically uh, we can say pull from it. So the different type of files which we might be having in in Git might be YAML. Uh, maybe Helm charts or maybe customized files will be there. Now the uh, because these files are stored in Git repository, their version changes between the versions are easily easily tracked and. Uh, and we we work with it. So how is it possible, right? How do they do it? Uh, how do they get the data from the? Uh, the the source which we have. So that is basically over here, which and we are coming to the main part now. So how do you basically do this, right? So there is a tool which is called as Flux. So this tool keeps the Kubernetes cluster in sync with the source of the configuration you have selected. The Flux APIs are called as GitOps Toolkit. So the GitOps Toolkit is called as, or the Flux API together are called as a toolkit for GitOps. Now, so. There are a couple of components which we will be going through uh, over here in some time. Just want to give you the high level overview first. So we have this uh, source controller and this source controller is basically an operator. So it's a uh, this is the one flux source controller. So what this source controller does, this source controller will be uh, will be syncing with the uh, Git repository. Uh, it can also connect with S3 bucket can also work with Helm repository. 
So what it does is it's an uh, it's a Kubernetes operator. It gets the artifact from the various uh, source repositories which you have. And uh, it's one of the core components of GitOps, and this is the one which makes it connect to the repository, the one of the main main parts. So what are the features of this? It basically authenticates to source. It validates the source authenticity. It detects the source changes based on the update policies. It fetches fetches the resource on demand and on a schedule. Uh, package the fetched resource into a well known format. Makes the artifact addressable by their source identifier. Makes the artifact available in a cluster to the third parties, interested third parties. Notify the third parties of source change and the availability, any status, event hooks, and react to Git uh, push and Helm chart upload events. So the uh, so the uh, the this is the core uh, component, and there are other components as part of the Flux uh, GitOps toolkit. And their core, these core components are, are listed over here. So we have the, the this is what we were discussing about Flux source controller. We also have Flux Helm controller. Uh, Flux config controller is there. Flux config uh, custom resource definitions are there. Customized controller is there. Notification controller and Flux config agent as such. So we will go into depth over here. Just before we go to that particular page, I just want to take you to the Flux uh, open source uh, documentation, which is on available on on this website, which I'm going to just uh, put it in the chat window for all of you to bookmark and read maybe afterwards. So Flux is a tool. So see, it's it's very logical. You want to uh, you want to uh, everything should go through Git. You should connect to Git, right? How do you do the how do you connect with it? You need a tool to do it. So this is the Flux is a tool which is which for keeping the Kubernetes clusters in sync with the source configurations like Git repositories and automating the updates uh, to configuration when there is a new code to deploy. Now Flux is built from uh, ground up and so on and so forth. Now in in uh, in short, uh, the Flux provides GitOps for both app and infrastructure. So Flux and there is a component called as Flagger. You can go to the uh, just look up for uh, it on the website. Uh, so what Flagger does it, it Flagger basically does this can redeployments. Flagger basically does the AB uh, rollout. So uh, over there, so Flux with Flagger can work with application delivery as well. Now Flux can also manage any Kubernetes resource. Uh, just push to Git and Flux does the rest. OK, so Flux enables the application uh, deployment and with the help of Flagger. It progressive delivery, so progressive delivery is, is something where uh, let's say you have a new version of the application and you have the old version of the application and then you progressively are increasing the traffic to the new version of the application. In, initially they were 5% traffic, maybe uh, over a period of time you are slowly trying out the uh, that is your new environment even uh, going to handle that much of load or not. So you are going to progressively increase the traffic over there. That's one of the component or that is one of the thing which you can do as part of the progressive delivery using flagger. Now. Uh, so it uh, flux work works with the existing tools, which is the the good part that it is working with the. Uh, with all the tools which we have, uh, sorry, uh, yeah. So uh, can work with GitHub, Git Labs, Bitbucket, S3 buckets. And uh, uh, it works with push and pull mechanism uh, over there and can work with uh, any Kubernetes uh, tools and so on and so forth. So uh, we also have the notification and the, and the alerts. So if I just show you that part, you see this notification controller over here. So what this notification controller can do is it can receive the notification from uh, the Git repositories and from other controllers as well. The other controllers on the left hand side which were there and it can also do the push notification to team or slack uh, based on the uh, whenever the notif notification can be pushed to teams and slack as well. So this is the one which which does that. So that is the one which is uh, mentioned on the uh, other page uh, over here that the notification and, and things can be uh, connected and if I just show you this this part. So uh, we are on cloud native uh, tech radar and this is the old old uh, uh, diagram. Uh, 
but you can also go for the uh, you can just look up in their website for the new one. So we have these three things here adopt trial and do the assessment of uh, of the technology. So adopt is basically the technology which is ready for you to be adopted. It's recommended for you. You can recommend your uh, you can say companies who are already using it are recommending it for others to be to be used. Trial uh, there are things which are under trial uh, like GitLab uh, Circle CI customize in 2020 was under trial. You can try this out and you can look up for the new ones. GitHub Action was the one which was two years back, which was the, the thing to be looked up for. Uh, and today it's one of the main mainstream things, Jenkins and so on and so forth. So uh, you can read more about how does it work over here. Like adopt is something which you can, uh, which is clearly recommended. Uh, trial is the one which uh, we recommend that you take a closer look at and do the assessment of uh, of the of the third one. So we the ones which we find promising are over there. So flux is the is the is the technology which uh, you have you can adopt uh, as such. It's the recommended uh, one. Now if I just uh, take you a little more into their website, we it's basically we, we are looking at it, this from three point of view from the cluster operators the platform engineers and the application developers. So the cluster and today we are doing a deployment from the point of view of the cluster operators uh, who's or uh, who automate the provisioning and configuration of the cluster platform en engineer will build the continuous delivery for developer team. We actually will be doing a little bit of uh, platform engineering as well and the app developer who relies on the continuous delivery to get their code live. Now the uh, so that's all what I have on this page and I'll take you back to my diagram and we'll just go through these uh, components one more time and we'll see if we can understand them slightly more in depth. So this component basically connects uh, and get the information from the uh, from the deltas from the. Various sources and if I I just want to show you something I'm pretty sure you might be aware of it. So we have custom resources. Uh, in Kubernetes. These are extensions of the Kubernetes API. So if you want to do something which is not provided by the by Kubernetes by default, then how do you do this? Right? So custom resource is an object that extend the Kubernetes API or let us introduce our API into the cluster. To do that, uh, to do that, we have to write the customer uh, the, uh, sorry, uh, custom uh, resource definition, the CRDs as such. Now the custom resource definition to make flux work are listed here. It's a not not a very big list, but you may have to spend a lot of time into understanding uh, them. So, uh, most of them we will understand today, but some of them will be skipped. So uh, image policies, image repository, the update automation. These are various different type of functionalities which are being uh, provided by these custom definitions. So uh, GitOps toolkit can practically work over there. Now, the other components which we have. So, uh, so uh, uh, in the demo, when we will be uh, installing the extensions, this will get, uh, you can say, will get created or will get deployed, deployed or will get installed in our cluster. That's what I want you to uh, sort of uh, remember from it. OK, so because of some reason things are not in order, but uh, if I just go and show it to you, we are talking about the the flux uh, customized controller over here. So which is this? So it's basically so all of these are operators. So operators are the custom controllers in in Kubernetes. So all of these are, are named as controllers, but these are actually our operators. So uh, it runs the continuous delivery pipeline, so it reconciles with the cluster state. Uh, from multiple sources. It generates the manifest for customize and validates the manifest against uh, Kubernetes API, uh, does the health assessment and runs pipeline in a specific order and does the garbage collection and does the alert as well by prov and uh, provided by the notification controller. So what it does is is this. So it checks if uh, if depends on conditions are met. Uh, this is the, the sequence in which uh, the, the custom controller works. It fetches the manifest from the source controller, generates a customization if needed, 
build the 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 manifest using the customization decrypt validate impersonate apply prune verify alert notify if the cluster state has changed and this is how the uh, simplified structure uh, looks like over here the uh, that's the customized uh, controller. So what it is doing, it is watching for the events which are happening. Uh, and then uh, based on on that, uh, it fetches the artifact from the from your repository and it builds the uh, the YAML file over here or. Uh, over here and applies this and that's the deployment over there. Now. OK, so now. If I show you another component which we have flux helm controller. So what helm controller basically does? This is the helm controller in the in the architecture where we have all the different uh, source uh, locations here. That's the source controller. That's the helm controller. Everybody is talking to with the Kubernetes API. All of these are operators uh, running in the in some namespace somewhere. Now the features of this is basically that it watches the objects generate uh, helm chart object. And it supports the artifact produced by Helm repository. Uh, and uh, let me see if I can arrange my diagram a little bit over here. It's getting overlapped. Okay. Boxes are not working out. Okay. So Helm is a package manager in Kubernetes. It basically makes life easy sometimes. Uh, and the uh, so the Helm controller it watches for Helm releases and uh, it fetches the artifact produced by the source controller for helm chart so if you work with if you are working with the helm repository then it is it is the one which is uh, which which will take care of that part and it performs the automated helm action in, including the helm test rollback and uninstall offers uh, configuration options for automated remediation rollback uninstall retry can run Helm install upgrade in a specific uh, order. Can prune prune the can do, can do the garbage collection. Can provide the alerts and can do. Uh, you can say build in customized compatible Helm post render. Basically, it it works with other other services as well. Now uh, there is one more component which I think I just want you to focus on the notification controller over here. So this is the one which which will notify us. Uh, as such, so this is a small definition I have snipped and I have kept it over here for us to go through. The controller handles event according uh, coming from the external systems like GitHub, Git Labs, Bitbucket, and so on and so forth. And it also can push the uh, the notifications to systems such as Slack, Microsoft Team, Discord, Rocker, uh, based on the event severity and the involved object. So. There is a question in the chat. Uh, the URL for the chart. It's the the tech radar is in the that uh, CNCF uh, tech radar is in the chat. OK, now I'll just zoom out and just want to show you a couple of things. So everything is happening inside uh, is happening because of these op uh, operators which we have installed here. And I will do one thing. I'll take you back to uh, Microsoft's uh, uh, documentation and we will try to read a couple of uh, things from there. They have a very nice detailed uh, diagram, which is little more. Uh, it's slightly difficult to understand, so we will use it now then because now we know a little more of uh, how it operates. So this is the same thing which is there. Uh, but. Uh, the. Uh, OK, so that's where we will be uh, using Azure CLI to uh, do the configuration. ARM is representing Azure, uh, the Azure entire Azure Azure Resource Manager. Uh, there are resource providers, specific services which are providing what we are trying to achieve. Uh, and the things happen from from here. So this is the Kubernetes configuration data plane service. So whatever configuration uh, you can say, uh, or let me take you to this agent over here. You see this flux config agent. So this flux flux config agent basically gets the uh, it pulls the uh, or gets the uh, uh, the changes uh, or it it 
gets it from the data plane. So this is that agent which we have here. The I have not uh, kept all the arrows. It was becoming very complicated there. So this is the agent which we are talking about right now. So this agent basically watches the flux configuration custom resources and it creates the sorry. It creates the flux uh, configuration custom resource and the this is the flux config CR config name Git repository CR and customization CR. So this is what we have here customization CR. Uh, the configuration controller, uh, the, the Git repository configuration controller and so on and so forth. So the uh, sorry, uh, uh, this this uh, uh, this configuration controller which I was pointing here, this one is is over here, the third one. So it is watching for those custom resources and it creates the uh, some more custom resources and then we have the flux controller. Uh, the controller, the source controller customize help and notification service, which basically is what we have in this uh, where we have pointed all these uh, blue lines. If you can see these light blue lines, source controller, helm controller, notification service and customized controller. And these are the ones which are also doing the deployments of the Kubernetes objects in the in the cluster. So some pods are coming up or some other services are coming up over there. Now the. Uh, and the uh, the sync part is also going on with with Git repository over there. And there is something specific which I want you to uh, see. And I'll just jump into the, the demo now. I'll just start uh, showing you stuff. And uh, before I do that, I have kept the overall architecture with me over here, uh, which is something like that. So uh, uh, this is the uh, Azure Arc connected Kubernetes cluster, which could also have been in uh, GCP or could also have been in other locations over here and like that. So we will be installing flux. We will be installing. So we'll have a Kubernetes cluster. We'll connect it with Azure Arc. Then we will install the Git GitOps uh, toolkit flux and then we will. Uh, we will go to Azure DevOps and we will make the CICD pipeline. That's what we are doing. Right, so I will make one architecture of it and we'll start deploying it. But if I just show you uh, what's going on here, that's the application change. Uh, that's the Git repository. Flux pick up the changes. This is the version one, the desired state. This is the new desired state. That's the old one. That's the new one. So the rolling update is going on, and the application is rolled rolled to the to the version over there. So let's let's do this. And I will just look at the diagrams. Oh, sorry, I'll just look at the the chat for a second, and then I will just start with the with the demo. I'll I'll explain what we are doing. What's the difference between Azure Service Fabric and GitOps? Service Fabric is a is a microservice running platform. It's like Kubernetes, but for .NET stack. It's not Kubernetes. It's Microsoft's own. Uh, you can say microservice running platform, but for .NET stack, so it's comparable with any container orchestrator. Uh, GitOps is just infrastructure as code, or GitOps is the practice where we are using the source control for infrastructure as code, and everything has to go through Git. Uh, the diagram I'll upload it. it uh, I'll share this diagram as well, right? Okay. Now check this out. So we have to. Uh, so the the demo will take uh, some time, right? We may be spending next 30, uh, 45 minutes in in doing this. So I'll I'll see if if I can make this as interesting as possible. So we'll be making one Kubernetes cluster uh, over here uh, as such, and the Kubernetes cluster can be anywhere. Uh, but we are using Azure, so we, we are using the, the the Kubernetes cluster on Azure. AKS, it will be uh, the configuration which we are uh, going to do. So we'll make one Kubernetes cluster uh, as such. Imagine a two node cluster over there. And let's make this because it will take some uh, five to ten minutes to create. So in the meantime, it, this cluster is coming up. We will be. We'll come back to the whiteboard and we'll see what else we are doing. So one Kubernetes cluster. And this is AKS Azure Kubernetes services, which I'm 
creating and uh, let me find uh, vs code i will zoom in here and uh, let me just quickly check if i am logged in or not so my azure portal is uh, let me just log in first <clears throat> and i actually have the azure portal open here this is my azure portal i have the entire backup with me in case something doesn't work we'll go to the backup and we'll start seeing that i have already deployed everything however uh we don't have anything here this is uh just one uh this is the cloud shell this is for the cloud shell if you know cloud shell so that's the azure subscription uh and uh let's let's start with it uh let's see if we have a resource group or not we don't have any resource group which we are looking for so we will create everything so okay now uh, so okay so we have to create the uh, the cluster first and we before that we have to create the the resource group and uh, before that we just have to install a couple of things a couple of resource providers are there <clears throat> so i am just going to use uh, bash so i am just changing this to over here to azure cloud shell bash over here so this will connect with my uh, with 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 the with the cloud right now uh, over uh, there so this you see this admin azure is basically uh, this shell which we are connecting to this one over here this one so everything is running in the in the cloud so i don't have to do any installation in my laptop but uh, over there now uh, we are already logged in, so we, there is no need to log in. We have also, I have also uh, just connected with the cloud. So there are a couple of things which I will uh, have to perform before we can get started. So the there are a couple of resource providers which we need for this uh, task. So resource providers are various in the ARM architecture of, of Azure behind the fabric controller, like we are the users. So behind, so let's say there are users and whenever you do any any configuration in azure right that configuration basically uh, is uh, is an api call to the fabric controller uh, not the service fabric this is the fabric controller microsoft's uh, clouds uh, orchestrator now the fabric controller is is basically behind that we have the resource providers so we are right now registering the resource providers and they are the one which are doing what we are with what we want Azure to do for us. So whenever you create any resource, the resource providers are the ones which are doing it for you. So by default, all the resource providers are not uh, registered and for the what what for what we are doing, they are definitely not registered. So we are just uh, installing some resource providers. This one we actually don't need. Uh, I thought of showing you the demo of SQL as well as 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 part of Azure Arc, but the session was anyways, uh, it was going out of the way. So Kubernetes resource provider, container services and Kubernetes configuration. These three resource providers are there and I'm just uh, running them. So you will see it's running on the bottom of the page. So I'll just put it here. Things will be running there. Now. OK, now to make uh to see uh or to basically to, to do what we are doing there are few extensions which are also required now there is a kubernetes these extensions are part of your cli infrastructure like these are already installed in the cloud shell so when i will run them here it will say already installed or something but if you are doing it yourself you will be needing them in your azure cli which is installed in your laptop so uh by this you can add the extensions and by this you can update the extension if they're already added so right now if we run them, it will simply say that I'm already there or something and it's already updated to the latest version. If not, it will update it over there. So these extensions are like uh, modules or libraries or something which you would require as part of Azure CLI to be able to run those type of commands. Now. The. Uh, there is something which is very, uh, very specific, which is called as 
connect Kubernetes. This is for Azure Arc. This is the important one. So need uh, this extension to work with Azure Arc like that uh, for Kubernetes as such. So this will also be automatically installed uh, over there. So if I just uh, have a look at it, like what all things are installed over there, so you will notice that we can uh, we can just uh, I'll just uh, copy all three of them. I have three things to monitor over here. So we are saying Azure AZ provider show whether it's already uh, registered or not. So when it is registered, we'll go to the next step. So you can see that we are able to see that things are registered here. Uh, sometimes it takes time. It takes five to ten minutes uh, for them to register. Uh, so they are registered. We are good, good to go. Uh, I can see all are registered. And because they take five to ten minutes of time, I actually did that before in this subscription before the session, so they don't take five to ten minutes uh, over here. So it happens very fast. Sometimes it takes time. OK, so now we are starting with the main part. We just need one resource group and we need one Kubernetes cluster. It will take some time, so we'll make it first, then we will understand what we did, right? So, OK, so I'm creating one. Sorry, I'm creating one resource group. This is the uh, RG in East US. We have 60 plus regions in Azure, so uh, uh, for this demo, I'm picking one of the old ones. The name of the resource group is Azure Arc Test because of no reason uh, as such, but most of the commands were uh, the, the uh, I'll give you these uh, documentation of from where we are doing this. Uh, and uh, if you want to make any name change, make sure you change in all the locations, right? So we are deploying this in this resource group in East US. And uh, apart from that, we are also uh, creating one uh, ACR. So ACR is uh, this service where the images uh, will be there. So this is ACR. ACR stands for Azure Container Registry. So over here, and we will be connecting this with the Kubernetes cluster, uh, like like this. So that is Azure Container Registry. So this is the one where the artifacts will be will be kept over there, right? All the artifacts will be there. Uh, the images are the artifacts for us and they will be getting pushed into this location over there. So we are making it first and we are connecting with the Kubernetes cluster. So we are doing that over here. So this is the the repo for Docker images. Now the this name already exists. I did that before the session, so I'll just change this name. So this is my ACR name. It has to be globally unique and I'll give it here as well because I'm connecting both of them. So we are creating the ACR. So a Azure ACR create in the same resource group. That's the name of my uh, ACR. I'm assuming that name to be globally unique because I have just added one random number there. And this is where we are creating. Uh, Kubernetes cluster. Uh, Kubernetes cluster. And it is having and the name of the cluster is is arc CICD cluster. It is having two nodes uh, right now, and uh, I don't have the quota for a big cluster, so two nodes is, is great. Quota is the is the limit in your subscription. This is my demo account. Limit is ten core uh, in one region, in the demo accounts. So in a production account, you will not face any issue like that. So we'll just select all and we will run this. And let me just run that. Okay, it will take some time. Uh, it will run. We'll just have a look at it. It's if it is if the name is is unique enough or not. It's unique enough. Otherwise, the error might have already been there. So. OK. Now let's understand in the meantime, this is happening. Let's understand what's the next thing which we are doing. So the Kubernetes cluster with two nodes are coming and just FYI when you make the Kubernetes cluster called as Azure Kubernetes cluster AKS, right? This is. Kubernetes services in Azure. Let me just put it there. Let's say Azure. 
Kubernetes services. The steps which we are performing right now will be will remain around 90% same for your other locations as well. If you do it for other clouds, uh, the the network configuration will change, meaning the way you are connecting to the cluster will change, meaning uh, you may have a proxy server there or proxy connection as such. So that that delta will be there. So like 10, 10, 15 percent changes will be there to what we are doing. So you may have to look up uh, in Microsoft's documentation to connect to various location, like how do you connect to, to AWS and GCP and so on and so forth. Now in, in Kubernetes cluster in, in Azure cloud, the master node is free of cost, right? This is free of cost. We are not paying for it. So we are paying for the two workers which we have. We have this node one, node two, uh, and that's what we are paying for. This is the one which is coming up right now, and I'll just have a look at it. Seems to be uh, deploying. We'll come back in few seconds and uh, in let's say in another one minute to see what happened over here. OK, now once this is done, we have to connect this with the with Azure Arc. So I have to create Azure and we call it as Azure Arc enabled resource or Azure Arc Kubernetes enabled resource like that. It's basically the the connection uh, over there. So we'll be doing this. We will just create one Azure uh, uh, Kubernetes uh, based resource. And this resource is the one which will be, uh, you can say, connecting to this cluster. So right now, uh, hypothetically, we are imagining this cluster to be on premises because it's anyways in the cloud. If it was in the cloud, then why you need to connect with it and so on and so forth? Why don't you just manage it from the from AKS directly? But think of any multi cloud scenario where you this is only one of the uh, cluster and you have massive uh, uh, deployments on prem in, and in in different clouds and so on and so forth. So we, we are just looking at these steps over here. So this connection needs to be done uh, over here. Uh, once the cluster will be ready, we'll do that. Now in the meantime, I will uh, do one thing. Uh, once this is done, we will be installing. Uh, we'll be creating one namespace and we will be installing the flux uh, uh, operators which are there. So uh, I will just make it over here. So imagine this to be the namespace, this dotted line uh, to be the namespace over here, like this. And those flux operators which we were looking at, they need to be installed, right? Which we have in the uh, in the diagram over here. These ones. Uh, sorry, uh, these ones. All 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 these. So uh, the installation of that. Uh, is not very difficult. It's hardly will take. It will take some time. Uh, it's not the we don't have to do it manually. We have the uh, the charts available to do that. So this is the namespace of flux. Sorry, uh, let's just go back to that diagram. Over here. And let's see if it doesn't do that again. So this is a namespace. And uh, here a couple of things will be installed over here, right? Like this. So I'll just represent them uh, in in this way over there. Now, so that we can do once the Kubernetes uh, uh, the arc has been uh, connected and so on and so forth. So let's go and see if we can complete that part, and we'll just go and have a look at it. So the cluster is still running. But I can just run the command. I think uh, the names and everything is fine. So. Uh, OK. So. Uh, we will get the credentials. Credentials from the cluster. Uh, so it's like uh, get the credentials, like get credentials of this cluster. So the class, this is the resource group. Uh, and that's the cluster name and we will get the credentials from it. The previous command just executed seems to be pretty healthy, so we'll run this one. So AZ, uh, do you want to overwrite? Yeah, please overwrite. OK. Uh, so the the credentials has been merged with the with the cube config file, which is in my hope home admin uh, like this. So the credentials are there. Let's do the connectivity with the cloud. And the there are so it's a it's one liner over here. So in this line, we are basically doing that. So we will create an Azure 
arc, uh, Kubernetes uh, connection resource over there. And the name of the resource, I have kept it same. So they both will be same. So anything which I do in this resource. So what happens like once once we do this, let me just run it. Then I'll tell you what what happens after that. This will take some time. So now whenever you mail, you will implement. So now from this point onwards, we can do the deployments as over here and that deployment will be applied on the Kubernetes which is connected to it. So that's what happens, right? Uh, you will be able to monitor things from there. You will be able to do the GitOps configuration from Azure uh, Arc, and this uh, cluster might be somewhere in the in the entire world over there. So that is what we are doing in this, and one resource by that name should be coming up, and we'll just go to the Azure portal. We'll have a look at it if everything is healthy over there. So we'll say go to the all resources, and we can see that couple of things are are already there. We'll just sort them in the order. Now, so this is the the uh, the container registry where images will go. That's the Kubernetes cluster. That's the load balancer of the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, and uh, the the Arc resource is still coming up. OK, now it's there. This is the uh, uh, Kubernetes Azure Arc. So if I click on this, uh, it may not show any value here. Once it is healthy, it will take around five minutes. Then the values will be shown here, but you will be able to do uh, namespace based management, any ingress, egress. Uh, you can you can check out your workload from there. Uh, you can also do the GitOps configuration uh, manually from the from the portal. All these things can also be done individually at the at Kubernetes level. If I click here, you will notice that the these options will be available here as well. Uh, some extra options are also there, but it's all about in in multi cloud environments, you are sitting in one location. You don't have to log in in the other location. It's deployed on premises and you can do the management from there. So this resource is coming up and. It's already up great. OK, so it needs uh, one uh, token from us. We will see there is no uh, I can show you how to generate this token. Uh, I have a couple of lines uh, of command with me. Let me just show you. How is that done? So. It, it needs uh, we call this bearer token to connect to, to Kubernetes. Let me do that. So I'll go back to the uh, sorry to the VS code. And these are the the commands. So what we are doing is we are creating one uh, uh, admin account. So this is the admin user. Inside uh, Kubernetes service account. Over there and then. We are basically uh, creating one uh, role over here. Role and then we are creating the secret and the token. Uh, so. This token is the one which is needed in that line. So this is the token. And we will just echo it out. So whatever the value will be. We can just run that particular token. Uh, we'll, we'll just uh, copy the value and we'll give it in the cloud and uh, it should connect. So this uh, is right now. You can say authentication uh, and authorization happening uh, for this with that. So if I take you back. Let's see if it's done and can we see the output or not yet. I take some time. And uh, and the previous operation is not completed yet. It's still uh, happening. The connection is still going on, so we'll just leave it like that. We have already executed it. We'll come back in some time. We'll copy the token value now. OK, let's go to the, the CICD part now. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, before the CICD part, let me just install the. Uh, let me show you how we are installing the flux. Uh, uh, GitOps toolkit and uh, I will copy the the command and I will take you to the uh, to the documentation and we'll read the documentation from there. So check this out. So we are installing the flux now. Install git ops toolkit. Toolkit like that. OK, now uh, let's go to documentation first. Uh, just want to show you a couple of things. Uh, 
Now, if I take you here, and if I take you to the tutorials over there, you will see that there are two versions, Flux version one, Flux version two. Now, I tried the Flux version two yesterday, uh, and uh, when I was setting up the, the demo, and this is in preview. Uh, honestly, uh, this is in preview, so you cannot uh, expect this to be uh, running perfectly, but it was not running. And there was a something was broken in mid, uh, broken in the sense because uh, one of the custom resource, uh, you see this, the 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 custom resource definitions which we have, it was missing. So there is nothing which I could manually do to get it corrected. And we rolled back to I rolled back to the ones which was, which is right now uh, official. So uh, the one which was missing was uh, was this one I think. Uh, it was totally missing over there, so it, it, this uh, was not uh, was not there. So and there is nothing by which I I could do to manually install it, or uh, or maybe I didn't spend enough time to troubleshoot it. But it was not working fine uh, on uh, yesterday. Maybe uh, by the time anybody watches this video, it might be working fine and so on and so forth. You can try the the version two. The version two is the one which is more like a microservice, and the version one is the one which is more like a monolithic application. So the version two is the one which uh, basically uh, has all the different operators and the version one is like one more monolithic uh, operator which does everything. So. The we are going with the version one and we will not be using the the version two and you also if you're reprodu reproducing this uh, tutorial, don't use the version two. Try it after a few days uh, and this link is going in the chat right over here. So this is the one which we are now seeing. Uh, and and so on and so forth. So uh, whatever I have done is listed here. <clears throat> you can uh, I'll walk you through this, but you can also have a look at it uh, yourself uh, over there. And uh, it may not be very structured, but you'll be able to make sense out of it if you watch the recording again. And if you uh, use this documentation, you will be able to even go through more details than what we are able to do right now. Right, so uh, OK, so. Now. I'll take you back to the. Uh, to this. OK, so we are installing the the flux. Uh, uh, you can say GitOps toolkit over there version one. Uh, Version two is actually called as the GitOps toolkit, uh, the V2. So I don't think if if I should call this as the 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 GitOps toolkit. We are installing the version one, the one the of the one which is official right now, the one which is uh, stable, and the version two is in preview. Uh, okay, so we are installing it in in our cluster. It's in the resource group called as that resource group, and the the operator namespace is called as a cluster config namespace over there, and the 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 repository is over here. This is the repository from where. This is the official repository. I think I should be able to op open this and just show it to you. That this is the repository uh, of of Azure's repository. So uh, this is a stable version. You can read more about uh, what we are doing right now uh, over there. And uh, this is what we are actually doing. So. Uh, and the scope is a cluster type scope, so we are installing the the flux in the Kubernetes cluster. So if I run this, uh, it will do that installation for me in the Kubernetes cluster. Let me see if the previous command was uh, successful. The token was there. So let me copy the token uh, from here. And uh, let me zoom out once. OK. So. OK, let me see. And. Uh, oh. OK. Yeah, it's done. I was just checking that it's already done. Over there. So I'll just keep the token with me uh, in my notepad. If you want to go there and see it in some time, we'll go and check it out. 
Now, so Flux got installed in the Kubernetes cluster. It's just one line liner over here. So uh, I'll just represent it somehow. I'll just make a dot there maybe. Like this, you can just uh, uh, you can kubectl, you can get the namespaces and you can also see the different pods which are there, but imagine this to be the. The Flux uh, uh, operator which is installed there. Now what we will do is we just want to see how CICD will work. So now we will go to Azure uh, dev.azure.com and in dev.azure.com we will make the CI and the CD pipeline and as part of the CD pipeline we will. Uh, we will make the flux flux uh, monitor the path from where GitOps needs to be executed or GitOps uh, the source which to which the flux should sync and get the changes from that location will be specified. So we will do that part now. So I, I'll take you to dev.azure.com and we'll make the CI and the CD pipeline over there. So like this. And the artifact will be the artifact location will be that ACR which we have on the right hand side. That's the same ACR which we are just making it here again uh, because the diagram uh, is flipped right now. So that's the same ACR. Right, so the output should go here and this should uh, is the one which goes there. Uh, and. Uh, and the the infrastructure is code. So the. The Git repository. This is the uh, you can say the Git repo. That Git repo is the and we will have a specific path. We don't want the full report to be monitored. We just want uh, the flux of uh, flux to uh, source controller to uh, look for changes in, in one specific path. And if there is any infrastructure as code change there, do that in the cluster. So as part of the this uh, the demo right now, a uh, few namespaces will get created in the in Kubernetes. So think of this as one of the namespace and think of this as the other namespace dev and stage. So this is the the dev and this is the stage namespace. We don't have space. It's uh, throughout the cluster, but it looks like that box over there. So let's go to Azure DevOps and let me take you there. So I think I may have logged in before here, so we may have an organization. If not, we will make one organization there. OK, this. Uh, this is my backup. Let me sign out. All of these are dem uh, dummy accounts. Uh, after the, the, the demo, these accounts will not be valid anymore. So let me just see if it asks me to sign in again. If you can, just ask me to sign in. Let me sign out again. Sign in with another user. So the user name uh, is somewhere. Let's copy it. From here, from here. That's the user who we have for this session over there. So we have mm, OK, so let me close everyone everything. Let me open the. Uh, let me open it again. So I will I came out of the incognito mode. I think maybe I was logged in another session there. So. OK. Some previous. Uh, session account, can you? Just log us to the new one. That would be great. This is the 
this is that I think a 30th session or 31st session which I am doing on reactor. So there are so many accounts. I'm a little confused. Just give me a second. Let me uh, on go there. OK, progress. A second. And OK, so finally we. Found our organization here. That's great. So this is uh, that's the name of the company. Uh, I just gave my name there. Microsoft reactor demo, but that's this. This is equivalent to your name of the company. You can create many organizations there. And this is how the dev.azure.com looks like and we are creating one project. So let's say GitOps uh, CI CD for Arc Kubernetes like this. And I'll go for the public uh, project. Uh, I'll give you the project link as well in case you want to. See something there. It will be valid for a few days. And that's the one. I just want to do a little bit of configuration. Let me just quickly go and check a couple of things. So I'll go back to my organization. I just want to see if the directory is connected or not. Uh, I can check it from here. The directory is connected. Great. And uh, did I enable the billing or not? Uh, let me just quickly check one more thing. So we used to get the free agents. Now the free agents are I think still there. But uh, I just want to enable the billing. So anything which I'm doing in the Azure DevOps, it will be charged in my demo account. So. The uh, the good thing is I can increase the number of parallel jobs. I can say I want to do more parallel jobs so I don't get stuck somewhere down the line. So if I'm running something and if I let's say something failed and I have to run it two times, so uh, or there are two different pipelines which are running so it can parallelly run. So it's nothing to do with the configuration. It's just that I have faced that issue before, so I just don't want to face it today. And uh, we are done from the organization's level. Let's go inside the project. That's the project. And uh, let me. OK, so what we'll do, we'll go to the repositories and we will start importing the repositories over here. Now I am just going to my secondary scre screen to find the link of the repositories and it's the same tutorial which I gave you uh, earlier. And uh, there are two repositories which we are using and let's find the. The notepad and we'll put it there. So in the first repository, we have the application which we are using. So in this repo application is there. Uh, it's a voting uh, application front end. And back end is there front end. Uh, I can show you the image of that. So. You and those who work, uh, you, you guys may, may have seen this before. But I'll just quickly copy the image of that and will. Paste it in the whiteboard. So this is the application. It looks like that. That's the the front end and the the back end is Redis cache. Uh, so two containers are there basically. Now, OK, so and uh, cats and dogs and so on and so forth. Basic things are there. Nothing, nothing uh, special over here. That's the dummy application. So the application is in one of the repository. So. And the the GitOps uh, GitOps uh, uh, configuration is in the. Uh, in the other one, so I have this repo or application. And there is one repo. Where we have the. Uh, Git ops. Uh, infrastructure as code. So IAC information will be there, so we are just connecting. Uh, you can say them to Azure DevOps. That's what we are trying to do. 
Now there is something which I want to show you. It's not the only uh, structure of your of the of the projects which we maintain, and I will give you one link which you may use to uh, find the other things as well. Just give me a second. OK, I think I did not save that link with me. Let me just quickly go through it again. So there are various different type of uh, directory structure. OK, I think I found it. OK, so let's have a look at this. Right, we'll just go through this. And I'll give you this uh, structure in the chat as well. You will take it will take you some time to go through it. So take your time. But this is the mono repository structure where application and the infrastructure, everything is in the same repository. So base production staging, uh, base production staging for infra. There are pros and cons of each one of them. It will take you some time to go through the pros and cons, like what type of delivery management is possible, one repo per environment. So what is the pros and cons of this first one? Then one repo per environment or one repo per team over there. So this is a repository structure where team one, team two uh, environment is there. And uh, like this or one repository per application. So this is uh, this is that and uh, and so and so forth, right? And it's uh, you can go through all these things. So uh, do that. Now what we are doing is basically uh, we are we, we are importing two repositories uh, and we will be uh, using the sample image, uh, the, the voting app which is given by Microsoft. And the other one is where we have the the Git. Uh, the GitOps uh, files in the other one. So these two uh, I'm using and I'll just paste the tutorial link again in the chat if you want to bookmark. This is the one, the last one. Uh, bookmark it, you will find all, all of this there. So I'll I'll just do it. I'll just take this and I will take it to the uh, Azure DevOps and we'll just connect to this one. So this should be the source one. And we will repeat this process one more time. You can use your personal, you can uh, use your personal repositories as well. So, <coughs> which is all good. I'm just importing another, sorry, uh, another repository here. And let's copy the other link, which was there. The GitOps one. And in some time, we'll go and have a look at it as well. There is, uh, no, uh, it's not a very complicated uh, scenario, so uh, I'll just show it to you, but not having anything very special there as part of infrastructure as code. It's a very simple solution uh, as part of infrastructure as code where we are deploying the the namespaces. These namespaces don't exist and we will. Uh, we would like uh, flux to to deploy that using GitOps. So. Uh, OK. So if I show you the uh, if I show you the uh, the namespaces, this is the uh, these are the namespaces over there. Dev and stage, these two. These namespaces don't exist. We would like Flux to monitor or to to uh, you can say connect with this path. We don't want the entire repository to be connected. We don't want any, all the folders to be monitored or to be uh, looked for, but uh, Flux can watch this manifest slash namespaces or uh, sorry, uh, ACR CICD cluster slash manifest and whatever files are there and we will we can uh, put the infrastructure files over there and then Flux should be able to deploy that. That's what we would like to do. So as soon as we connect, these two things will get created as soon as we uh, do the uh, this connection over there, this dotted line. We haven't done that yet, right? So I think let's go and do that. There is nothing else uh, which we can do before that step. So I am just 
going to see if uh, everything is running here. Successfully great. So we are doing the GitOps uh, connection. Or uh, we would like to monitor that. Uh, as such. And I will just zoom in and we'll read this. So we are saying Azure Kubernetes configuration create cluster create. That's the name of my cluster. That's not my resource group, so I will just pick up my resource group name from here. Over there. And uh, operator namespace, these namespace I gave the same names. Uh, the project repository is URL, so let's pick it up from. From the from here. This is basically the name of my organization. Uh, here. And uh, that's the name of the project. <coughs> yeah, correct. So. The. Uh, it's uh, it's a public uh, project. This will not be valid. I can remove that. The the usernames and passwords will not be valid. Otherwise, you have to create one uh, pad token. You can do it from here in case you would like to see that. You can go to the projects and let me just duplicate this page a couple of times so I don't have to reload the same page. But if I go there, you'll be able to do that from from here. Sorry, not from there. From here. Basically personal access token, so copy this value and give in the, in the second thing which I deleted over there this value. Now. Uh, OK, so scope cluster type connected cluster and we just want to monitor that one one path where we have the infrastructure files, so we have specified that specific uh, location uh, this location and we just want that specific path where the manifest file is there to be monitored. Uh, not not everything. So this is what we are running and let's see what happens. This is flux version one, so the commands are saying OK, great. So OK, it's done. The the namespaces will be will be coming up. Uh, we will we'll check them in in few minutes. And before I do that, I just want to. Uh, do a couple of things over here. Where? OK, or let, let's let's let, let's do one thing. Let's go and quickly check the that whether namespaces are already created or not. If not, we will think of that. Otherwise, we'll just continue with it. So kubectl and uh, get namespaces. So. We should see the dev in the stage one. And. The I can see the stage. And the dev is here, so perfect. So the whatever changes will will be there. If we add another namespace, that namespace will also be will get created, right? So uh, there was nothing in the cluster. Now we have these namespaces with us. So uh, now what we will do, we'll just complete this CI/CD path. Uh, infrastructure is already ready. We have the dev and the stage namespaces. Let's complete this CI and the CD part. And we'll go through it. So. Just want to take you back. Now the pipelines which we are creating are already there in the repository, so we will be using the pipelines from there. It's in this repository. And. Uh, the the CI and the CD. So these two other ones, so let's copy the CI one first. And uh, I will not run it. We have to do a little more configurations. We'll read it and so on and so forth. But I will just. Uh, I will just rename it. Because the name has been given in the uh, in the so all the names are, are are specified. The 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 CD pipeline is monitoring the CI uh, as such. So. Uh, otherwise, we have to change the name in all the locations. So let's create another pipeline. 
and this is the continuous deployment one. That's the repository where we have it. And we will go and read it once we get it from there. So continuous integration and continuous deployment. And let me just save it. I can rename it on the previous page as well. I can rename it from here also. So let me just put up. OK, now if we go back, we have this uh, with us, CI and the CD. So let's go and read read that. How what is happening inside CD, CI? Uh, and we will not run this yet. But we will go and read it. So if you have taken any previous uh, session from uh, uh, if you have worked with this, you will be able to recall it. So basically the trigger is on the master branch and there is a variable group which we have not created. We will create that. We'll copy this name. I'll keep it in my notepad and we have to create it first. So a lot of configuration needs to be done. It's not ready yet, but uh, basically what it will do, it will build uh, and push the Azure vote vote uh, image. Uh, that's what going, what's going to happen. Code quality check. Uh, there is a template where the code quality check information is there. Uh, build the image and uh, uh, the source location uh, and the Docker file location is there. Build container template file is there, and we are making the 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 uh, the Redis cache backend for the voting application. And some tags are being pushed uh, are being uh, you can say put, and then this this thing uh, there are two images which are get going to be pushed as part of the CI over here in the ACR. So to make it work, we have to create this uh, variable group where all the information will be there. But before I go there, I just want to show you CD as well. So we don't have to come back and go through that again. So this is the CD one and let's edit it. Uh, or let me OK, yeah, that's fine. There are two stages which are here, uh, dev and that uh, and the Two, literally two stages, dev and stage. So uh, the uh, so what will happen? The 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 CI one will trigger this uh, CD over uh, sorry uh, CD over here, and then the it's looking for this variable group which we have not created yet, uh, which we will create uh, now after this, and there is a deploy to dev uh, stage over there, and then deploy to stage stage is there. And there is another variable group called as Azure vote app stage, which needs to be created. So we'll copy this and we'll just put that in the notepad. And we will start going and uh, going. We'll go and do that. So you see all the templates which are there. Uh, all these templates require some variable information, which needs to be specified in a group uh, of variables with that name. So that's what we are going to do. We'll just go a few pages back. Uh, we'll just click on library and we'll click on the variable group over here. I'll copy the name from the. From my notepad and it will take me some time to do it, so I'll just take your questions as well on the way. Uh, because I'll be uh, copy pasting a lot of information from uh, from various locations. And I think I forgot many things, so I'll also remember recall to do that. So the ACR name which we never saw. So is here. That's the ACR. And if you want the FQDN of it, just click on the property section. Or on the right side here, this one, that's what we want. The uh, this login server name dot Azure CR dot IO. We'll take this. We'll put it here in the value. Then we need the service principle based connection which we never made so let's go and do that and the name and the one which we are going to make will be with this name uh, over here that name is referred in the code so what we are doing now see so if you can see that the right hand side is in uh, azure right to this uh, red line and the left hand side configuration is basically uh, dev.azure.com they it doesn't have rights, so we'll go to Active Directory. And in this Active Directory, we'll create one service principle which will automatically get created, but the name is what we would like 
to be that what we uh, copied from there. ACR, uh, demo ACR, uh, something like this. That's the name. And this service principal will be having uh, some rights on the subscription level uh, over there because we are selecting it uh, to be having the rights. And this is the one which will be connected to the uh, dev.azure.com to our project. So this is Active Directory for authentication and authorization. So let's do that step before we forget to do that. So I will just quickly go to the project settings and it's not zoomed in. So let's just zoom in here. Service connections. Uh, first service connection. Resource manager to Azure. I would like to make the connection next. Service principal automatic. Manually we can also do it. It will just take time. And that should be my Azure subscription. I can select one resource group also. Uh, any specific resource group. Uh, and I will grant permission to all pipeline. I, I, you will be seeing that I'm, I'm granting permissions in all the locations. It will be very restrictive in your real environment. So. Uh, more. Uh, like the three golden rules which, which we have just in time access limited access take the access back whenever it's not required, but that's not what I'm following right now. So this will get created. I will come back and check it out. Let's just quickly complete the. Uh, let's add more variables here. OK. So. The. The image which will get build needs to be pushed in the. Uh, ACR so. What's the what's the tag? Uh, and what's the you can say what's the image name and it needs to be tagged also. So this is the name which we want the image to have an Azure vote like like that, right? Now the environment name. So. We are doing a two stage deployment, so first we are doing it for dev and then later on we will clone this variable group for stage. So environment name is there. Uh, from which branch will this be getting its information? Let me see if there are more spaces here. No. So this is going to get it from the master branch. So let's put that. And then which folder we have that folder which uh, we were. Uh, we, we, to which we have also connected uh, GitOps. Uh, source control is, is on that folder. Azure vote manifest. Uh, and in which repository do we have the GitOps uh, files? The, the infrastructure as code file that is the other repository, which is this repository over there. The other one. The name of the organization. That's the name which we will copy from. From here, that's the name of the organization. That's how it comes in the in the URL. And that's your company's name or right now it's just reactor. And the project name will copy from here. That's the name which we gave. This is the one. All of the these are used inside the. All of this is used inside the. Uh, the the pipelines, uh, the, the various templates are looking for these values. The full URL of GitOps repository. OK, so this is going to be the repository URL here. This one where we have the. The CI files, I, 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 IAC files, and for the application, which is the source control or source folder, it's called as Azure Vote. I'll just copy paste it from a secondary screen. And the target cluster is the same cluster, Kubernetes cluster, which uh, we have the name which we have given as Arc hyphen CICD hyphen cluster. That one and the last value will be of the target namespace. So we are doing a deployment in dev right now. So. OK, so this should be should be OK. If it doesn't run, we'll come back and troubleshoot. I think it should be OK. Hopefully I have not added any space anywhere and some and something like that. Let's go and see if the service connection was successful. Yeah. That's great. And. Uh, OK, so we'll clone this uh, over here and we'll make one more for 
the staging uh, for the CD staging part. Uh, so here we have two environments. Uh, test. And stage. Two namespaces over there, so. The. Uh, sorry, not not test are uh, dev and stage. So. This is dev over here. Uh, this one. And that's the other one. Which are already deployed. OK, so. The other one is called as. Uh, that. And uh, we'll be winding up in next 15 minutes, right? Just approximately like that. Now. Uh, let me just put the environment name. So we have just had to change a couple of things here. Environment is different. And the target is different. That's all. The rest will remain same. Uh, all the variables are common. We're using the same service principle. And uh, let's save it. Let's zoom out. It's too zoomed in for me. Even I am not able to see what, what's going on there. Now. Uh, OK, I will run it manually uh, and I think it will require uh, some permissions to be given. So let me see if any error is coming. No, not yet. Great. So let's run the CI. So this is executing right now. We, we could have uh, gone to the GitHub repository, but that repository which we are using is not my personal repository. It's Microsoft repository. I cannot commit there. So uh, if if you fork it to your own uh, repository, then uh, then you can you can do that. I will manually run it. Uh, I cannot commit in Microsoft's repository. So the permissions, yeah, that's what we were waiting for. It needs some permissions over here. Yeah. Use the Azure. It's needing permission to use the uh, Azure repo uh, to use the variable group over there. Now this will run uh, part one and part two. I have seen that it unnecessarily fails in one of these step, uh, which uh, is not here. It's in the CD part, but if you rerun it, it will run fine. Uh, not sure why it was failing, but we will see that in the in this uh, CD part. If it fails, we just run it again. And it's just uh, not sure why. OK, so. The steps are happening here, so these are all all of them are defined in, in the in the various templates as such. I'll zoom out and we'll read a uh, few of them. So check out the code. It's happening very fast. OK, so check out the uh, the code. Uh, do the Python. Uh, uh, put the Python test testing, publish Flask 8 test results, uh, Docker file, uh, then convert the markdown result uh, over here. You can see uh, the various test cases are some of them are failing, some of them are passing. I think all of them are passing right now. Uh, failure type, markdown link, uh, and so on and so forth. So these are the test cases which are there just to see if you have given the proper markdowns so or spacing is proper. Uh, YAML file is is proper. Uh, properly there convert. Uh, public and and so on and so forth and then do the build operation. So the code quality check has been done and now the image is getting built. And. Will be pushed uh, into Azure. Uh, in some time over there. OK, so right now this operation is going on. It, this is uh, there will be two images which we will go and have a look at. Uh, right. So. Uh, the meantime, uh, let's see. OK, I think it's done. Great, so let's go to Azure. Uh, in the repository section, so we are in the container registry right now. In the repository section, you will see these two are there. Vote back and front. That's the voting app front, uh, and the other one is the is the uh, back end uh, over there. So 
this is the pipeline and uh, this is the the uh, this is the CI uh, pipeline now uh, what we have to do is uh, we just have to go and see the CD one CD one should have uh, should be should be running uh, by now uh, if uh, if not we'll see uh, over there so I'll just take you back to the to the other one and it's somewhere here and let's see not yet so let's see what went wrong and let's run it so stages to run okay resources okay then it should have already executed by now there should be some error here or no okay so okay great uh, yeah, need permission. Yeah, correct. So it needs permission over here. Like, so permission to, uh, you can say, or depth. So human, some human permissions are required. Uh, we can fully automate it as well. Permissions. So to fully automate, what we could have done is we could have uh, gone to the uh, to the variable group, and in the variable group, we could have clicked on the permissions, and we could have given the permission manually ahead of time then that need not have been given. So we could have done it here. Now we can see it that they have the permission, but uh, we could have added with, with this plus icon there. So it was not manually, uh, it was not needed at that time. We could have done it from here. So yeah, this is that step and there is no, uh, it will just rerun it. It will start working as such. And this is what I was telling you about. Uh, that the one of the step for where the git and let me just show you which one will fail when you will also try it. Just rerun it. Uh, I uh, this git config and it basically uh, this line over here. This one fails, so it's like uh, setting up the user mail and git configure global user names as such. This one will uh, was uh, was exiting Ex uh, exit happened over here and the and we have re-executed it so we'll wait for it and uh, let me see if it is rerunning or the attempt number two and where is the previous one so i think it requires another attempt then third one so let me come outside and we'll just run it again. OK, so. In the meantime, it runs. I'll just show you how it looks like. This is the backup one which I kept uh, over here. Hopefully it will log in very fast. Or not so. All of these are dummy accounts which we will clean up after the session. And this is the one which I was running last night. So we did some extra things also, but we just will just go to that one. And this is the one. So deploy to dev at both completed. And the first uh, stage. These are the previous attempts over here. You will should notice that it should have failed over there. Uh, I think the previous run ha had the failure. OK, so now uh, this is the same thing. Configure Git uh, and so on and so forth. Deploy to the staging environment uh, over here. So this completes the deployment and the images will be uh, in this location. So you can open the uh, the service endpoints and you will be able to service connections. Uh, you can do the port forwarding and the. Uh, you can say there are two pods which are there for the front end and back end. Uh, front end and back end and this is the voting app. That's how it it looks like. Something like this over here. So this is the one which is. Uh, still executing in the other one 
and we'll wait for that one to finish. And uh, let's go and check that out over here. And uh, let me just go and have a look at it again. Yeah, so that one passed. Now something else has failed. Let me see what it is saying. Is it something which I then change? Unable to access. Oh, yeah. I forgot to give the rights, uh, so I will just quickly do that. It doesn't have the right to to check in the code or check out the code from repository. Uh, so we'll go to the repository section here. And uh, to the GitOps uh, repository where it has to check in, check out the code. We'll go to security. And we will be going for our this is the the this is where we are giving the access that. Uh, you can do contribute. You can contribute to pull request uh, and you can create a branch if required. So this should have been given earlier. And uh, so we'll go back. We will rerun it. So I sort of forgot that, but it was throwing the error. Say they are saying that you don't have the generic contribute permission to perform this action. Uh, at the scope repository and on the. Let me just quickly confirm that I gave it on the correct repository GitOps over here. So if you remember that for GitOps, uh, it might be a pull or it might be that the auto. We are not using an auto scaler right now, but an auto scaler can go and modify the configuration before doing the auto scaling. So we will just rerun the. These steps again. OK, so. Uh, let's quickly go back and do a quick revision of what we have done. This is what I had for the for the session where we uh, covered the the CICD creation and uh, differentiated between the DevOps and GitOps, and we are monitoring the GitOps location with Flux and uh, that particular. Any infrastructure as code uh, change which is done is versioned and it's being uh, deployed in your environments as per your uh, configuration. So uh, if I let me just quickly see if I have anything in the agenda left over there, otherwise I'll take your questions. OK, so. Uh, I'll just share the links uh, back again. Uh, and. I will just see if I can. Find the link again from the chat window. OK, so the theory of what we have discussed is on MS Learn on the on on that page over there. This page over here, that's where all the theory is there of hybrid infrastructure, Azure Arc, Arc enabled servers, scale scalability, secure. We haven't talked about any uh, security as such. You can go and read more about this over here. What is Defender? How Defender is the service which monitors the the cyber kill chain? So what is that cyber kill chain uh, which Defender is monitoring? and is giving you the security score on top of it. And how do you monitor the hybrid environments as well with Azure monitor? It is having 15 type of monitoring things over there. And uh, the introduction to Azure Kubernetes uh, enabled cluster and what is GitOps and then the other links which you can use to reproduce what we have done today is. Uh, I'll, I'll just share the last it, it again. So this is the part one. And I think uh, this is the second part and anything which any other link which I have given may I may have taken uh, from some hyperlink over there and may have done it from that location. OK, so please ask your questions. And. Uh, the staging needs permission. Uh, I told you that we could have given permission, but I 
think I didn't thought it ahead and didn't give it. So let's give it now. So the deployment is happening in the staging location now. And uh, the image is getting pushed over there. This one, the bottom one. OK, so. Uh, OK, so. I will just uh, do that. And I'll give you the the sketch. Let me see if I can drop that in the. In the chat, that will be great. If not, then I'll just upload it in a storage account and I'll give it to you over there. How about having Terraform in place uh, in Azure CI to manage infrastructure in Azure DevOps pipeline? Yeah, why not? Uh, definitely uh, Terraform is is very interesting because it can you, you can do the multi cloud uh, uh, deployments with it. So the but here it didn't matter that much because we were using YAML files, so YAML will remain uh, same or similar for multi clouds as well because you are inside the Kubernetes cluster. If you are not using any cloud specific cluster which is having anything specific, uh, if it is a generic one, then the ML files will remain uh, same or similar. But yeah, Terraform was another good idea. So this definitely can be Terraform. Yeah. Okay, one, one of the go to options, yeah. OK, so. And. Uh, OK, what is the difference between Agro CD and Azure Arc? I will see if I can give you any reference link. Uh, I have not used the. Sorry, Argo CD, right? Argo CD and the uh, Azure Arc. So let me just. I think uh, let me uh, I can I'll see if I can share you any reading link for Argo. I can help you with the. With Azure uh, or any other thing which I have worked on. OK, so uh, think of your questions and. Uh, what is the best practice to deploy the app to production? Do we proceed with gates or directly always with gates? Uh, gates. Uh, never directly. And proper uh, actually uh, the third pipeline which I created, I just want to show you that one. So which I just made it uh, in my backup scenario. This is a pull request one where we. Uh, where this is not yet fully uh, gated as such. We haven't enabled it. One pull request will get created. Will someone will go uh, and will. Uh, you can say we will we'll go here and we'll click on the pull request will. We'll approve it. We'll check if there any merge error and, and so on and so forth. So all those things can also be done. One question uh, which is there in the chat. How can we? How can we push the code from Azure DevOps to GitHub? Assuming my Source repo will always be Azure DevOps as I am running GitHub advanced security using code QL workflow. Pushing the code from Azure repo to GitHub. Uh, we could have done it in this way. Uh, not sure. Uh, 
need to check on that. But we could have done the other way around. We could have connected the Azure GitHub as the backbone uh, and the Azure repo. Uh, so this is this is from here. Like these are the GitHub connections which we can establish, but I'm not sure if this is uh, this will satisfy your requirement or not. This one. OK. Oh. The Argo CD link is going in the chat. And uh, not sure if they, that is a correct page or not, but have a look at it. And Azure Arc, you guys already know what that is. You can compare both of them. OK, so as currently the CACD has been set up on Azure DevOps, just have the security analyst on GitHub, please. So just what approach will be taken? I can come back on that. I'm not sure about which approach will be taken. Uh, if you find me on 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 LinkedIn, uh, just uh, ping me uh, once over there. Let me think through it. I'll give you one definitive answer on that. I'll give you a well thought answer. OK, so what kind of tools can you use for configuration management? The Azure DevOps works with uh, all the tools which you have. Uh, let's say if you have. Uh, any any popular tool which is there, there is it's not that we only have to use uh, this. We can work with uh, uh, any uh, other tool as well. Uh, so it connects with all of them. Any uh, specific uh, tool which you are looking for? Use Chef uh, Ansible or Ansible is you can use that. Puppet can be used. Hey guys, any more questions? You can even unmute your mics and ask the question. OK, so I'll just see if I can give you the the architecture as well, which we have created today. So. Just give me a second. OK, so. Uh, I'll see if I can upload this in uh, GitHub repository and I will share it uh, maybe in some location on the YouTube page, but for those who are in the uh, session right now, I will just give it to you uh, over here. So. Just uh, take it. And. Just give me a second. That's the data which we are. Over here. And. The architecture is going to be. Going there. Please download this. Uh, it should open in. Uh, Edge or any browser of your choice. So click on it and download it and save it with you, right? That link may not be uh, valid after a few days. So the it's in the chat window. Please click on it and. See if you can just save it. And that's all. That's what we have discussed today. You will find it uh, on that page like this. And it's as SVG file, so even if you zoom in, it should not blur. Uh, you will be able to read all the details which we have put there.
OK, so guys, uh, then let's do uh, one thing. Uh, if you uh, join us on the YouTube page and if you join us on the LinkedIn page and on meetup page, you will find all the upcoming sessions as well. We have more sessions uh, as well planned for you. So this is the meetup page. Uh, you can join the reactor group. We have around 18,000 people there, uh, 14 to 18,000 in this group. And you can also find us on uh, YouTube. Uh, all the previous session recording and this uh, session recording will also be on YouTube. So if I just go to uh, this reactor page like that, and this link is going in the chat, you'll find all the previous sessions there from all the various uh, individuals and this is some old devops and dev tools uh, session so you can have a look at that as well that's me on on that this link is also in the chat and for your questions uh, any follow-up question which you have uh, for me i'll give you my uh, linkedin page ping me once and i will help you with those things as well it's in the chat window. Okay. Uh, thank you, Shivam. Uh, uh, so I would like to share you the links. In the chat section, I'll be sharing it now and explain those links. Yeah, though, so the first link is the LinkedIn group, the reactor LinkedIn group link. The second is uh, Shivam's that is today's speakers LinkedIn group link. And the third one is uh, the reactor Bangalore upcoming uh, link. Uh, this group link, which is for the meetup page. And the last one is the reactor YouTube channel uh, link. You can just go there. Feel free. To reach out to Shiva as well on his uh, LinkedIn. So final call for any questions and then we'll proceed towards the wrap up. OK, so guys, if there are any questions, uh, let us know. Let me know. Otherwise, you can follow me on uh, LinkedIn as well. I'll be in Chennai for a session on 7th. If anybody is in Chennai, find me. We'll be doing ML Ops for IoT Edge devices. And uh, other uh, speakers like Vivek and every others will also be there on 7th in Chennai. And uh, if you are there, find us there, right? ML Ops for IoT Edge is the is the topic I'll show you how to work with uh, whatever we have done, but with uh, we'll take we'll train one uh, face recognition model and we'll deploy in Raspberry Pi in this in the event. Right, so have a nice day and. Uh, take care. Thank you Shivam for the session and thank you all for joining us today. Please do share your feedback about today's session. Also, feel free to use the learn module links that Shivam has shared you in the chat section. Uh, that will bring access to the additional resources to your learning further. Also, please visit our reactor uh, Bangalore meetup page. The link I have shared you. Thank you all once again and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank, Thank you. you, Shivam. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.